Доброго дня, шановні пані. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. We are going to start our work today. You see, see in the first presentation topic is the actually attacks and persecution of the Ukrainian activists in the first half of um, uh, this year. We have the following following participants today. Anastasia Moskvichova, researcher of the Center of the Human Rights Vina, Lena Vinogradova, analytical expert of the Center of Human Rights Vina, Irina Fedora, activist, Vitalia Shabunin, um, activist, etc. Um, welcome everybody who is here in this audience and the, those who are following us in the online, uh, in the internet network. So the topic, once again, the persecution of this, um, uh, of the civil uh, uh, activists and the public activists. We are going to tell you what happened this year, since the first day of this year, what kind of the public uh, activities are most in danger, in which regions uh, there were most bitter persecutions. And we're going to draw attention to the latest cases of persecution, the trends uh, we uh, witnessed today. In general speaking, how the uh, election campaign uh, impacted the uh, public activism. We just did a bit of analysis who is going to participate in the elections and what about the local activists who were subjected to some attacks. We are going to share this information with you as well. And a bit we are going to talk about the legislation, specifically what kind of legislative initiatives, new legislative initiatives we can talk today, considered by the work on Radio Ukraine, which can actually restrict or limit the activity of the public activists. Uh, but first I would like to turn the mic to Anastasia Moskvichova, researcher of the Zmina, a human rights center who is going to briefly tell us about the main trends and the figures uh, we have since the beginning of this year. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, well, uh, you can see my presentation on the screen yet. Okay. Over the nine months of this year, we've uh, registered 74 uh, cases of persecution for the public and uh, advocacy um, activities in in Ukraine. We did not take in consideration this monitoring the cases when the victims themselves say that the prosecution were associated with his or her political activities or pre-election, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, activities. Or maybe the case happened during the meeting, which could be considered as some kind of the action in support of this or another political force. Among the registered cases, the um, uh, most there were physical attacks on on the activists. Eighteen uh, of those we registered, registered since the uh, beginning of this year. Eighteen case, um, seven uh, cases of uh, intimidation and the damage to their property. Thirteen cases. Six cases. Uh, there, there were some signs of legal. Mm, persecution, let's say illegal uh, detention, etc. Some other six of each of those. In some time of the personal data, data which were close data, or there was some surveillance. Um, uh, somebody actually uh, were following the activists, and there were some kind of other cases of public organization. In the top of the most risk uh, reading, so to say, um, activities of uh, those people, uh, which we can actually talk specifically, the uh, anti-corruption and in the defense and protection of the uh, people, of the uh, LBCT. And uh, the most cases took place in the city of Kyiv, 34, and in the Dessa region, 11 cases. Then, uh, followed by the Kyiv region, which we considered separately, and the Dnipropetrovsk uh, region, six cases in each um, you know, of those. And this is the territory distribution over the three last months. In July, <coughs> August, and September, all in all, 24 cases were registered. And again, here, Kyiv and Odessa lead the way. Odessa region, I mean. Uh, they lead the way, so to say, anti-leaders, um, the biggest number of cases were physical attacks, then the uh, threats, 
the second place, we can say some individual case suit in intimidation when some law enforcement officer would put in the protocol that he, for example, he is going work for, you know, he, he will meet Sergei Sternenko and do something to him. And again, uh, intimidation of the people, we can give you the examples of the persecution of the, uh, let's say, Svetlana uh, Nagori Wolk, who actually um, uh, writes about some violation of scientific sphere. And uh, she, she reported in many cases of surveillance, um, uh, her personal and her uh, apartment. A lot of cases was related to the destruction or damage to the property, including the fire set to the house of Vitaly Shabunin, who is present here today. Maybe he will talk more about that later. Over this period of time, we actually also um, registered the fire set to some of the uh, vehicles in the facades, uh, facades of the offices of public organizations, organization of LBCT, um, and this continues in October. And the police again registers the, those applications for people just as they address from the citizens. Also in our report, we have the cases which have the signs of illegal detention and the attempts of legal persecution. And this uh, picture you can see, and this photo was taken by uh, journalist Stanislav Yurchenko. Uh, this happened near the Belarus embassy in Kiev when during the meeting for honest elections and against uh, the uh, illegal and legitimate acts of the Belarus, uh, Belarus uh, police. They detained uh, the former political prisoner Alexander Kolchenko. You can see him in this uh, picture. The, the court of the first instance, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ruled that he was guilty as uh, actually um, of, uh, offering uh, some resistance to the police officers in, in, in this court actually sentenced him to some, uh, let's say, um, punitive labor, something like that. But another court actually um, canceled that sentence. Such protocols uh, were, uh, uh, let's say, uh, written against three people this time. Other two were just detained. They spent some time in the precinct, police precinct, and then they were set free. Uh, and one of those people was taken by the ambulance from the precinct. And actually, and it later turned out that the police even did not ident identify that person. This slide uh, shows the uh, different directions of the public <clears throat> activities, uh, what they do, uh, what they have done over the last, or are doing over the last three months. Over this period of time, we can see uh, uh, a dramatic increase on the number of physical attacks on the activists of the LCBT and other uh, organizations. This can be accounted for the fact that there were some prides, pride parades in Kharkov and Zaporizhzhia among those, some public meetings uh, which met with some aggressive response uh, of their opponents. In the, at the same time, we see the animation of some of the radical groups uh, started to actively write in their uh, pages uh, about the uh, raids and the, against the, the, those people. They, they wrote about the death of pride, and it's known that there was some kind of attack on the um, participants. There were some 16 victims, or the uh, who fell victims of those attacks. But again, many cases were just registered as the application from, uh, on the part of the citizens. Uh, well, but um, in another case, there was some damage done to the policemen, and they opened some case, and they are waiting the court now. In the context of persecution over the last several quarters, we can talk about the use of the, <clears throat> uh, let's say, the complaints. Um, uh, use uh, as kind of anti um, anti propaganda against the activists. You can see those activities also in the top um, cases. Uh, when we were here in one of the previous um, uh, our meetings, we were talking about the um, uh, the paper submitted uh, under under Kach or hundred uh, life organization. The fact that uh, that they started the case, this fact was used in the media campaign against those public organizations. 
this quarter we can see a similar situation against uh, Ukrainian representative, representative Office of Transparency International, the deputy Alexander Dubinsky from the Servant of the People actually said that they organized the examination data organization on the, uh, let's say, anti-corruption law enforcement agency and again that has some negative connotation regarding this organization now we also wrote we, we sent the, the the paper to the to the law, law enforcement agency and they did, didn't um they didn't answer to us what what the the uh, let's say reaction to that during our preparation of this kind of report the people in the representative office of the Ukrainian office of um, uh, uh, let's say transparency they didn't know what happened and what was the end of that story so this is briefly the situation over the last nine months in more specifically uh, during the last three months thank you Anastasia Anastasia all those present here they uh, have the chance to take this report which provides very detailed information about the cases when the public archives were attacked. This report is going to be put on the website of the Zmina uh, Human Rights Center uh, website, I mean, uh, and you can uh, acquaint yourself with this report. Now I would like to switch over to the legal field uh, and what are the legislative threats um, for the, this kind of activists, why they are uh, risky or dangerous, etc. We have our expert, Elena Vinogradova. She's a legal analytic analyst. Uh, thank you. That during the third quarter this year, uh, they registered several of the draft moss in the Verkhovna Rada, Rada regarding the violation of human rights. Uh, 39, 16, 39, 17. Uh, which deals with the human values and which have to provide for administrative responsibility for pr propaganda of sexualism. And they actually uh, are aimed at adoption of some amendments, uh, reading that this is against the human morale. Also, 3936 draft law about uh, some abatements regarding the financial report of the public organizations who have the uh, inter, um, the foreign support. Unfortunately, September, Verkhovna Rada rejected very good uh, draft um, uh, law, 3316, which included several alternatives, three, and they even did not, um, didn't have uh, the first reading. It was not good. Uh, it hasn't gone even through the committee, respect to committee. Also, the committee, the integration of the European Union, their conclusion regarding 32, <coughs> 31, uh, 91, they uh, actually they adopted that to ban, not to, to ban the meetings near the uh, building of the um, Law Ministry, we should mention that uh, national practices of other European countries, recommendations, numerous recommendations provided by the international organization, the member of which Ukraine is, and the practice of the European Human Rights Court. Now, there are the grounds to say that uh, neither the practice of the application or any other instrument um, are, are regarded. And traditional or family values are the special subject. Instead of that, the special reporters say that there is a deep concern that uh, similar uh, draft laws like 39, 16, and 17 and discriminates the people of the LGBT, which uh, can have very negative consequences in their, in their life, will lead to some stigmatization, etc., including the, uh, the, the, the different complaints. They are concerned that such uh, legislative initiatives can 
contribute to the creation of such social environment which tolerates and allows discrimination and violence based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. And such an, uh, legislation has to constrict or restrain the people um, uh, in, uh, pro in trying to protect their human rights. Special reporters UN, uh, emphasize that the classification information about the LGBT um, uh, community uh, relates the, the rights of the uh, freedom of, view, of, of opinion, etc. And, and as such legislation initiatives once again i hope that no no more um legislative initiative this kind will be submitted to, for the consideration of uh, rather if this is the case they have to pay attention to the international pa uh, uh, act on the uh, citizens and civilian uh, rights which was uh, ratified by ukraine in, seven, in 1973 which proclaimed the equal Mm, attitude on the part of the law to all without people without any exception when we were working on this uh, um, uh, when working on such initial uh, uh, legislative initiative you should to, to take in consideration international practice of international organizations UN uh, constantly emphasized that um, gender uh, identity and uh, um, and uh, sexual orientation um, if we are talking about that, the uh, discrimination is prohibited by special ruling. And by the way, the, the human rights protection um, organizations they they say that uh, that such kind of discrimination is considered to be real discrimination. And the uh, the, the, the the ultimate conclusions provided to Ukraine back in 2013 in those final. Uh, conclusions the committee uh, expressed their concern that the uh, sexual orientation and gender identity were not gen uh, included in the, the list of uh, the grounds uh, which required the protection of anti discriminative legislation in Ukraine. They recommended it to Ukraine, to our government, to introduce uh, relevant and respective amendments into the existing legislation. Uh, also, they recommended the uh, the authorities of Ukraine to carry out the investigation and collect the data about the LGBT uh, anti-LGBT actions and and discrimination activities. And so, those uh, the the law draft laws which I mentioned above, they they run counter to almost all the obligations and commitments of Ukraine. If you are talking about the uh, uh, human protect rights protection um, context. They, they discriminate the LGBT um, uh, community uh, being uh, such low dra draft laws which have not been adopted yet. Again, uh, 3316 and alternative to that uh, draft law which were rejected in September. We wanted to introduce some amendments in the criminal code of Ukraine for the responsibility of intolerance cases uh, especially if you're talking about the sexual orientation or gender identity, qualifying uh, different signs of the crimes and the special qualifying sign that would uh, pertain to s several uh, individual crimes. I would like to emphasize the European uh, Committee, which I mentioned before today, yet in 2017, they provided the government of Ukraine with a recommendation to introduce such amendments in our uh, criminal code. And by the way, this recommendation be, be, became one of the two, uh, which uh, they, they require the priority in, uh, let's say, uh, validation or introduction. And uh, that was that was actually f fixed by the uh, presidential decree, etc. But until now, the government of Ukraine has not introduced the respective or, or had not submitted the respective um, uh, draft laws to the Verkhovna Rada. So the statistics regarding the crime based on the social sexual orientation or gender um, identity is being collected so to say manually. There is no official statistics which is the responsibility of the prosecutor's office. The human rights advocates they say that uh, the uh, the persecution for such crime is absolutely non-satisfactory 
they qualify, and I mean the law enforcement bodies, they qualify such cases as a usual hooliganism um, in most cases. And when the, uh, the parliamentary um, uh, MPs came up with the initiative to improve the respect to legislation in Ukraine and bringing closer to the international practice in the sphere of the human rights protection against discrimination. So the committee of the, the, the profile committee, uh, which has to work on those preparation of those draft laws, represents of this committee said that such draft laws uh, deal with a very, very, very sensitive topics. They're very high profile. They actually became the subject of trolling on the part of the MPs, uh, for the MPs. So they can, were considered by the committee as an intolerance to initiate the consideration of such topics as a provocation against communities and threat. And uh, this is some kind of archaic approach towards the protection of the human rights of the minorities, not only the ethnic minorities, but those cases which actually run counter to the human rights, generally speaking. I would like to to stress that when we start the consideration of this draft law, the, the committee, respect committee members, the, the, the chairman of the committee said that uh, before we start consideration, this is a high-profile um, uh, draft uh, draft law, and there are some concerns already being voiced uh, regarding this draft law. So the end of the story is some of the MPs say that we, we do not want to even to consider this topic. Let's just, um, you know, let's say, refrain from considering this topic rejected. So there was no material discussion of this draft law. No data were, have been were presented. They did not hear the opinion of the uh, people who were subjected to discrimination as a result of that. 16 uh, members of this committee out of 1613 would uh, 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 for the rejection of this draft law. So according to regulation, it cannot be submitted for the regular session of the Verkhovna Rada. In other words, the issue of further improving the uh, the specific legislation, you are talking about the activities of the LGBT activists, uh, will remain unregulated for uh, unspecified time because the MPs, the people's de deputies, are afraid to even to touch or uh, to raise such issues. Now I would like to talk a bit about the draft laws which are aimed on some additional requirements for financial uh, reports and statements. Uh, 39, uh, 36, um, uh, some other similar legislative initiative. And uh, this, uh, before they are, they are registered in the Verkhovna Rada, they have to be uh, examined whether they are consistent um, to what's going on in the world, generally speaking. The matter is that, that the right of this right of the citizens is regulated by a number of the international acts of the civil and political rights signed by Ukraine in 1973 and European Human Rights Convention. Uh, and you know, Ukraine also is part of this convention. Each of those uh, provisions and parts of this convention pr provide um, a very detailed explanation what is what there and what are the commitments of the respective uh, country. We are talking about the Committee on the Human Rights and the reports of special um, rapporteurs um, and uh, even the reports of the Venetian uh, Venice Committee and the practice of European Human Rights uh, Court. And all in all the reports, we can see that uh, they are unanimous to say that the discrimination of the public organization based on the source of their funding is the violation number one of the fundamental right of uh, the human right and discrimination of the illegal entities based on some financial aspects. Number three, this is the violation of the principle of minimum interference 
which is the fundamental in the relations between the state and public organizations. Thank you, Elena. We are very much pressed in time. We have to move forward. Thank you very much for the for your analysis you shared with us. So on the one hand, we can see that the people deputies continue the practice of registration negative um, in cases for the uh, civil um, community and the public organizations. I'm talking about draft laws, but at the same time when they submitted the draft laws, which would really allow us to, uh, to resolve the problem of, um, uh, of taking some um, they're taking some actions about the, uh, those who violate the, uh, the, the human rights, like discrimination and the gender identity. At least 12 draft in, uh, legislative initiatives uh, were submitted this year, which seriously endangered the civil uh, rights of freedom of Ukraine. Um, now we are talking about the civil sector who occupy some uh, official positions. They ban the public activists to provide to write meetings uh, near the official buildings. They take out uh, the term gender from the legislation. They prohibit the propaganda and uh, homosexualism. So they uh, embrace a lot of different issues. And uh, this can be a very serious blow at uh, the uh, Ukrainian reputation can uh, bring our country back for a couple of decades. That's why we try to uh, to focus attention on such um, draft laws. If you are talking about those who submitted such draft laws, uh, serving to the uh, people, um, uh, the opposition uh, party for life, and but Kivshina, but uh, there was no specifics regarding the regulation of the public organization in Ukraine. They deal with other spheres, but some of their provisions directly or indirectly are associated with the activities of public organizations. And very often uh, they were in the same, in the same uh, course, the entire Soros, Soros uh, uh, fans, let's say, campaigns. Um, uh, you know, different political parties and people deputies. Today we have the situation when one of those draft laws, uh, um, the authors uh, from the opposition party for life, 11 remain uh, the valid. They, they have been submitted for the consideration of the parliament. One of those is the draft law of Fedor Kristenka to the opposition party for life, number 3326, which was included in the agenda of this session, which provides for the uh, registration of those who uh, were members of the uh, Gromadsky sector, public sector. And we have to be very vigilant and to watch whether it is going to move. In the respective committees, we have to analyze what happens. We have to communicate with the MPs and ask them why such initiatives are uh, dangerous for the development of our country. We have here also Vitaly Shabunin, anti-corruption activist. He is the head of the uh, um, Center for Combating Corruption. So uh, during the last quarter, there was a case, his personal case, we are going to discuss it today. I'm going to give the floor to Vitaly. After they set fire to his house, it happened three months ago. Maybe Vitaly can share with us uh, some news about the, uh, let's say, investigation, how the law enforcement agencies do their job regarding this investigation, whether there is information, who could be the perpetrator of this crime. You know, we have such a long list of the friends, so it can uh, we need maybe two pages to, to fill it completely with those names. Uh, those who have more constraining factors in their heads. Uh, we attended court hearing Secretary Kolmolska, Avakov, uh, cases of uh, stealing concerning rock sex for uh, 80 old soldiers and uh, and. Ahmed of Rotterdam plus Bakhmatuk, we restored the case against him and many others, a lot of cases. This is an unpleasant story. And uh, 
it brings the red line even further, cars were burnt, facades of buildings were burnt, and in this case they tried to burn people inside the house. My parents were inside this house. An examination that was carried out have shown that special um, uh, that oil products were mixed and put there, and uh, we believe that this um, um, examination was carried out correctly, and we uh, cannot contradict it, but they did it in such a way to start a fire, uh, to start fire quickly, and uh, our neighbor was not sleeping at the time, and um, she woke up my uh, father and he turned off uh, the gas. And uh, I believe that Avakov tried to investigate this case in part of uh, uh, those who carried out this crime to show that he does his work, this is PR, but even um, those who committed those crimes, these people were not found. They had opportunities to do this. Um, it was easy to do this. Uh, they, um, uh, there are cameras on the street and um, also there are phones uh, and uh, even uh, it is difficult to, f maybe more difficult to find uh, those who order this crime, but uh, it is now easy to find those who, who commit it. And uh, uh, we will tell you more about it, about the efficiency of work of the prosecutor's office, uh, law enforcement, police, and uh, uh, the head of the police. We thank uh, you for support, and the people um, provided us with money to rebuild the house. This, is mon uh, this money uh, simplifies matters, um, and uh, this is the story. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. I believe that later on we will have questions and our colleagues will answer these questions. I would like to tell you about one interesting trend about local elections. But first, I would like to tell you about the situation concerning Irina Fedorev case. This is um, the editor in chief of the Chesna website in Katsubinska in Kiev region. And uh, several days left before local elections, Irina was not able to be with us. And uh, her case is exemplary. Irina, for many years, uh, campaigning for Bilichansky forest. Um, uh, this is the forest near Katsubinska. Um, uh, uh, there are some illegal groups uh, that try to cut this forest, and uh, uh, she believes that Katsubinska should be joined to Kiev in order to save the forest. And uh, we recorded during several years discreditation campaigns against Irina, and uh, they continue. In our monitoring, we have a case. Uh, uh, that some unidentified individuals installed a memorial plaque on the house of Irina Fedorev, uh, and um, they play, uh, um, accused her of alleged involvement in uh, corruption schemes while buying an apartment. Fedorev reported the incident to the police and wrote a statement about the crime. The police later sent her a letter in which they indicated that they didn't see any social danger in the installation of the plug due to its insignificance, so they didn't open a case. And so uh, there are uh, talkers, those who come and put uh, some messages and the police registered this as um, um, uh, an application from the citizens. They do not open criminal cases. That's why it is difficult uh, to investigate such cases, to start the investigation. 
only when they speak about serious attacks, so when attack happens and uh, there is serious uh, harm to life and health or an arson is committed, uh, then they start an investigation. So uh, it is difficult to achieve the start of investigation. Now we have election campaign and uh, on the 25th of October there will be local elections and uh, we would like to see the response from the activists on, who, on whom attacks were committed uh, this year and uh, during previous years. And we carried out a survey and this analysis has shown that many public activists uh, uh, who were attacked on, they uh, do not fear and now they are candidates to local bodies of uh, self governance and uh, they are from different political parties but kivshina golos gromadinska pozitsiya za mayboutetsne celo chasti sluha naroda udar evropeyska solidarnost and uh, part are from local forces nadia team svetlochna gurovitsa dessa and many others some of them are self-nominated. You may self-nominate for the position of the mayor. And uh, this gives us hope that despite all those persecutions and attacks that are ongoing during these years, in the majority of cases, there is no efficient investigation. Often crimes are repeated three or more times against one activist. Uh, during several years. Many of these activists, they are not afraid of this. They continue their public activity and uh, they are ready to take responsibility. They are ready to um, participate in elections and to take responsibility for the future development of their regions. And I believe that this is an optimistic trend. So we have the list of such activists uh, in our monitoring uh, overview. This is briefly about what we wanted to tell you today. And now we are ready to answer your questions or to listen to your comments. Dear friends, if you have questions to speakers, please raise your hands and introduce yourself. If there are no questions, maybe some final remarks from our speakers about law enforcement bodies concerning investigation. Uh, this is the start of the process. For three weeks in my case, we tried to get the status of uh, uh, the victim and uh, only um, uh, for a week we were trying to find uh, to get the materials of the case then there was no requalification because we believe that this was an attempted murder and uh, they continue the case of arson instead. At least they do this. So this is only a start of the process. We should motivate them to carry out investigation. Anastasia, do you want to add something? I would like to say that people often address us, people's deputies, international organizations, they ask what law should be adopted in order to stop these attacks on activists. Unfortunately, I should say that we do not have such a law. There is no magic pill. You cannot put a status of uh, this uh, civil activist in the code, introduce more strict uh, punishment, uh, for attack on activists uh, than uh, f um, against uh, ordinary people. And uh, these crimes are not investigated. Um, no matter what articles in criminal court we introduce, the key problem why all these attacks happen is impunity. 
In order to stop all this, we should do one thing, to reform a system of uh, law enforcement bodies, police, uh, prosecutor's office, and the uh, court system. This is a comprehensive task, and we see that uh, uh, power changes, and there is a great sabotage of the reforms. And uh, here I would like to say about law enforcement bodies, not about courts, because many of these cases, they do not go to court. Police do not start criminal proceedings, or they start them and then they close these cases. They do not serve, send, uh, they do not serve charges, and they do not file the case to the court. Even uh, concerning um, those who commit these crimes, uh, there are witnesses to these cases, especially in the regions and to police. They do not have any problems to identify those suspects uh, uh, who attacked. Uh, and when they speak about those who ordered these crimes, uh, we cannot speak about it because uh, the only case, uh, the only notorious case when they, they, where they speak about uh, those who ordered this crime, this is the case of Katerina Ganzuk. And we know that uh, a civil society sector, they really do a lot. They really pressure law enforcement bodies to investigate the, this case. First, they wanted to accuse a person who didn't commit this crime at all. Starting from the lowest level, from the level of those who commit this crime, there is big sabotage. And Anastasia mentioned that this, this is the problem of qualification of the cases. For example, if we are speaking about attacks on activists, uh, or for example, on feminists, uh, on LGBT, so police do not see any hatred there. They see it as hooliganism, and uh, they qualify it as hooliganism and uh, uh, also attacks on ecologists, anti-corruption activists, uh, uh, bodily harm, heavily bodily harm, but they qualified, uh, qualified as hooliganism. It envisages that uh, there were no people who ordered it. This is just a social behavior, anti-social behavior. For example, someone saw Katerina Gedzuk and decided to put acid in her, so um, that no one paid money for this. So many cases are qualified like this. And uh, once again, uh, we stress that only reform of uh, law enforcement bodies and uh, court reform will put an end to this impunity uh, concerning cases of attacks on civil society activists. I would like to say that I am proud of those people who against, uh, despite all the threats, despite the fact the police did not open the cases, they did not search for the uh, those who actually uh, attacked those activists. They sometimes uh, resort to very dirty tricks like um, threat their children. We mentioned Svetlana uh, Wolf, uh, who met with very brutal uh, prosecution and uh, you know and actually she she had some difficulties even telling us about what they did to her uh, most dirty tricks i repeat myself so uh, we should res our respect to those activists who continue their uh, their activities not being afraid to go to the, let's say, to local authorities, or trying to change that situation from inside. Um, I would like to thank everybody for your participation.